Welcome to this episode of Inbox Talk. We're your hosts, Liz. And Evan. And I'm a success manager here at Drip. And I'm the deliverability manager here at Drip. So today we're gonna be tackling everyone's biggest question. What the heck does deliverability mean? What do you need to know about it? And what can we do about it? Yeah. So it can be a really kind of scary thing. Um, you get to talk about it all the time. I get to tackle it with customers too, but um, it's one of those things that's like a medical condition. If you look up your symptoms online, <laughs> you can go down a dark hole very quickly. Yeah. We wanna make it so that it's not a scary thing, that you feel in control of it and you know what you can do. So again, we're just gonna talk about some overview of, of really what it means and what you need to know about the inputs today. Yeah. Could you maybe start with just a, a quick explanation of overarching what is deliverability? Yeah, so there's there's a lot of things that kind of go into it. Um, there's uh, your your overall sending reputation for your website. Um, there's uh, stuff like, are you on blacklists? Are you, uh, you know, hitting spam traps when you're sending emails? Um, just the, the your IP address that you have set up and things like that. Um, all of that kind of factors together to be your overall uh, sender score or sender reputation. Um, and that's going to determine whether or not your inbox or your emails are actually going to land in the your recipient's inbox or if it's going to end up in spam or promotions okay. or things like that. Perfect. So you threw out a lot of uh, key terms that I think would be good to dive into. You may recognize some of the things that he was just talking about. But um, yeah, I think just kind of diving into each of those individually. I heard you say IP. Yep. Uh, what what is that? Yeah, so IP addresses are kind of like the uh, the the address on like a, a physical envelope, or the return address, I should say. Um, it's kind of a way to trace back where the email actually came from, um, and those kind of accrue reputation based off of how many people are opening or interacting with the emails that that specific address is sending out. Okay, perfect. So when people join Drip, uh, we should probably mention that everyone's starting with using the Drip. Uh, pool of shared IPs that yep. we do use. Yep. You and your team are constantly monitoring those. We're always looking at the uh, reputation of those and definitely want to keep it up there. Yep. Um, it is something that we've talked to some customers on like a one-to-one -one basis about um, if it is time for them to move to a dedicated IP or if that's something that they're interested in, we would explore it one-to-one -one with that customer. So yeah. anything, anything to add there? Um, yeah, we're gonna gonna go into that in a in a later discussion. Just there's some pros and cons that kind of come along with that. Um, it's not necessarily the right choice for everybody, just depending on how much volume you're actually sending out. Mm -hmm. So perfect. So we'll just talk one to one with those customers, figure out what's gonna be best for them. Yeah, perfect. Uh, let's see. So another thing that you mentioned was sending domain. Um, my understanding that would be everybody has, of course, a domain that they're sending from, uh, right in the explanation there. So <laughs> Drip's sending domain and our domain in general would be the at drip.com piece of it. Correct. What would that mean for other customers or what should they know about that? Yeah, so the another factor of reputation, it's completely tied to your actual website. So, you know, your website.com or, mm -hmm. or whatever that actual kind of uh, URL ends up being, okay. um, that's going to accrue its own reputation separate from like the IP addresses that we just sort of mentioned. So uh, that again is tied into just how many, um, you know, how many, how many people are opening your emails and interacting with them. Mm -hmm. um, that'll build up over time. But the nice part is when you start out with Drip, uh, we're actually going to be able to help you uh, build up some of that reputation because uh, of how our default stuff is set up. Um, you lean on us for some of that, even if you don't have any kind of pre-established reputation. Perfect. Okay. And again, when people start, uh, when customers, I should say, start working with Drip, it's very similar to the IP. You're using a shared uh, Drip domain. You can have a lot of great success with that. Again, closely monitored. Yep. We can always explore if you want to do it right away or down the road to set up their own custom sending domain and that would be an option too. Mm -hmm. um, our team and our support team is constantly talking with customers about that. So again, pros and cons, we just want to make sure that we're giving the best recommendation per customer, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, blacklists. It sounds scary. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> Not really. Okay. <laughs> um, it's a list that's kind of kept by um, either email service providers or these external companies to um, kind of keep tabs on people who they know are abusing email. Mm -hmm. um, so they're overall a good thing because they prevent people from just sending you tons of email that you don't want, uh, but you yourself don't want to be part of a blacklist. So we go through and we monitor like our IP addresses, for example, um, to make sure that those aren't listed on blacklists or yep. if they do get listed, which will happen from time to time, um, that we can request getting them removed and kind of deal with whatever got us on the list in the first place. It works a little bit differently for your own domain. That's something mm -hmm. that you can look into. Um, but again, like they have processes in place so you can go and request that stuff to kind of get it taken care of as as quickly as possible. And for the purposes of mass majority of our customers, 
it's something that our team's managing. Yeah. Again, constantly being monitored. They're in good hands with, with our team here. Mm -hmm. Perfect, okay. And I guess from my team's perspective too, the way that you can avoid it is just by practicing healthy, healthy sending habits. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be something that we'll continue to bring up in this conversation and just, what does that mean? How do you do that? Yeah. All those good things. Okay, um, let's see. So spam traps, something that I think both of our teams tackle quite a bit. Um, All the time. Again, they sound a little scary. They're really not though. Yeah, they're kind of like secret shoppers. So they're, like, they're there specifically to make sure that uh, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing when you're emailing people. Um, they're set up uh, on purpose by these companies. And then if you start emailing them or they get added to your list and they don't get taken off within a certain amount of time, they know that you're not essentially keeping good list habits. Okay. The example I always throw out to customers is my swimming lizard email from back in the day in the mm -hmm. dial up days. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully no one's emailing that anymore, <laughs> but if they were to, that would be something that would maybe be marked as a spam trap and they just need to realize that they need to clean up their list and get that one out of there, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about as we continue these conversations, different strategies you can implement to, again, just make sure you're keeping it healthy on a regular cadence. The last thing we'd want to do is like, you wait seven years and you haven't done anything <laughs> and that's when you get yourself into trouble. Yeah. Um, so we'll just set up that evergreen automation to really keep it healthy. Yeah. I think that's fair. Um, okay, so we're talking a lot about list health and pruning. Yeah. The uh, success management team and my t team are always talking about this and educating customers. Anything from your perspective you'd wanna share with the, the audience? Yeah, I mean, regular pruning, or, or I mean, it's essentially removing people from your list. Um, we have a couple different ways that are set up inside the app to just uh, either automatically, or you can go in and manually look at people who haven't interacted with an email, opened it, clicked it, looked at it at all. Yeah. Um, in, They're not doing anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, in, in different sets of time. So, I mean, 90 days, 120 days, whatever it might be. Um, if they haven't done that, then we generally recommend getting them off your list. Okay, perfect. Um, and so kind of all of these things culminating together, I believe is really what feeds into what your sender reputation is. Could you dive into that a bit more? Yeah, I mean, it's essentially a credit score for your email. Um, it's a little bit harder to go and look at because they don't actually publish it anywhere. Um, but that sort, of, that sort of mentality being like, you can build it up slowly over time, but if you have bad things happen to it, it kind of knocks you back down. Um, so kind of keeping that in mind when you're going about emailing, that's how you actually you know impact whether an email is gonna land. Yep, and again, just with the more knowledge is power, the more you know, the more that you can be aware of all these different things, the better health and different practices that you can put into place to impact positively that yep. sender reputation. Yeah. So, okay, well, this has been helpful for myself. Hopefully it's been helpful for you guys at home too. We love to continue these conversations. So please reach out, let us know what questions that you have. You can always email our support at drip.com email. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to talking to you again soon. See you next time.